Welcome students. Today we are doing something different. We will solve a couple of MSAT questions and help explain to you all on the four main concepts in this paper. These include from molecules to living organisms, which is talking about structure and function, heredity and genetic technology, evolution and diversity of life, and the last one, ecology, which is talking about interdependence, energy, and dynamics. There will be multiple videos about MSAT past papers. Make sure to subscribe to receive the next part of this past paper by turning on the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Let's start solving these questions. The three pathways in the figure show the three major processes of the cellular respiration in eukaryotes. All the arrows from 1 to 12 represent net reactants or products, where arrows 4, 8, and 12 specifically represent a product. Let's look at the choices. Two of them are energy carrier molecules. An ADH produced in a glycolysis, produced in a Krebs cycle, but used in electron transport chain. FADH2 only produced in Krebs cycle. What about water, H2O? only released an electron transport chain, the last pathway. So we should think about ATP. In a glycolysis, we are producing two ATP. In a Krebs cycle, as well. In electron transport chain, we are producing from 32 to 34 ATPs. So the right choice to choose is ATP. Another question. Water is a substance that exists in different states of matter with vast variety of properties, including adhesion, cohesion, surface tension, and high boiling point. All these are properties because of what? Because of hydrogen bonds. Because hydrogen bonding makes the water molecule a unique molecule. So directly, we should choose the choice C. Let's read this question. Biology teacher has assigned you to study the internal activities of the cell's mitochondria with its internal details. You have different kinds of microscope in the lab. Which of the following microscopes would you use to complete the task? Before looking at the choices, let's understand exactly what they want from the question. They want to examine the internal activities, the details of the organelle, which is mitochondria. So we have to look for an accurate microscope. Let's go to the choices. Actually, A and B are the same. Light microscope and compound microscope, both of them depends on light. We will exclude them. Let's move to C and D. SEM and TEM, scanning electron microscope, transmission electron microscope. What is the difference? Regarding scanning, this type of microscope will detect the image by the reflected electrons. Okay, transmission electron microscope will detect the image by passing it through the sample. So, which is accurate, sure, the transmission electron microscope. So the answer should be D. In this equation, we will analyze certain data. The data below shows the results of an experiment conducted on potato sticks. Which of the following best explains the change in the length of potato sticks at concentration of sugar of 0.6 mole per decimeter cube? So we are talking about this concentration. I'll explain it in details with certain figures, but I want to highlight something. The original length for all potato sticks are the same. And here the length changes. I want you just to focus with the high concentration and with the lowest, with the highest and the lowest concentration. The highest, the shortest, the lowest here, the longest. Come with me to explain it with certain figures. Let's use these figures to explain the question. As we know, the net movement of water from high concentration of water molecule to low concentration of water molecule, that means 
from low concentration of solute to high concentration of solute. Come here. I will just use B and E. Originally, the potato sticks same length, but when we placed it in concentrated sugar, it became very short, and when we placed it in pure water, it becomes big and long. Why? In B, the water from the solution enters inside potato because high concentration of water outside and low concentration of water inside. I mean inside the potato stick. In E, from potato stick, the water goes to the solution. So, depending on this, let's go back and answer the question. Now we can answer the question. We are focusing on this concentration, 0.6, and we can see that the potato length becomes shorter. That means the water left the potato stick. So choice A and B are wrong because it's talking about the movement of water into potato cell. We can exclude them. Let's move to C and D. Out of the potato cell, the movement of water. That's right, but let's continue the second part. In C, they are telling us that the sugar solution has a higher water potential than the potato cells. What does that mean? That means the water movement should be from the potato cell to the solution, which is wrong. Let's move to choice D. Out of the potato cell, that's right. And the sugar solution has a lower water potential than the potato cells. Also, this is right. That explains how the water left the potato stick that makes it what shorter so the right choice here is d here another question about microscopes a student examined a leaf cell under an electron microscope of 1000 x magnification and then examined the same leaf cell under light microscope using magnification of 10x ocular lens and 100x of objective lens which means 10 times 100 1000 x let's continue the student concluded that the image of leaf cell under electron microscope was clearer and more detailed than the image observed under light microscope and that makes sense because electron microscope more accurate which of the following statement supports the student conclusion let's read them the first one the resolution of the two microscope was the same, but magnification used in the electron microscope gave an image that was 10 times larger than the light microscope? Sure not. They mentioned both of them. They have the same magnification. That's wrong. Move to choice B. The student used an electron microscope at a higher magnification than the light microscope. I will stop it here. Again, I'm repeating. Both of them, they have the same magnification. Choice C, the electron microscope has less resolution than light microscope, come on, it should be higher resolution, higher than light microscope. So I will stop it here, C is wrong. Let's move to D, the magnification used in the two microscope was the same, this is right, but the electron microscope has better resolution than the light microscope, makes sense. So the right choice is D. This equation is talking about photosynthesis process. A student was investigating the effect of light intensity on the rate of the photosynthesis of water plant. Which of the following gases will be measured as the student uses different light intensities? Listen, this is talking about the basics of photosynthesis. And we all know that the photosynthesis will consume carbon dioxide to produce glucose and to release oxygen. So, what the students want to measure is oxygen gas. The right choice is D. This equation it seems easy. The energy-related process that leads to the production of ethyl alcohol or lactic acid is called A. Protein synthesis. It's the process of changing DNA to protein. B. Respiration. It's the process of exhaling carbon dioxide and inhaling oxygen. Digestion process. Breaking down food to the simplest form which is a nutrient to be absorbed. The last choice, fermentation. This type of process 
happens with the absence of oxygen. And we have two types. One will produce ethyl alcohol and the other one will produce lactic acid. So this is the right choice. Another question. When you talk about carbohydrates in a diet, people mostly think of carbohydrates as a source of energy only. Which of the following is another function of carbohydrates? First choice, forms enzymes. That's wrong, because enzymes are proteins. B, provide the structural support like chitin. That's right, chitin is a polysaccharide. We can find it in shells of arthropods like crabs, shrimps, and some insects. C, structural components of cellular membrane. Maybe it's a part of but still it's made up of phospholipids and proteins. D, transport substances across the plasma membrane. Actually, who is responsible for that? Protein carriers and channels. So the best choice here is B, chitin. What about this question? The graph below shows the effect of light intensity and carbon dioxide on the rate of photosynthesis. Which of the following statement this describes the results shown in the graph. Let's see here. This is the light intensity increasing. So logically speaking, the rate of photosynthesis will increase. Even here, if you notice the concentration of the carbon dioxide here is lower than the concentration here. Let's see the statements. A. Carbon dioxide is not limiting factor for photosynthesis. Sure, it's wrong. Photosynthesis rate is proportional to light intensity, that's right. Rate of photosynthesis is limited by carbon dioxide only at low light intensities. No, not only. D. Light intensity and carbon dioxide both limit the rate of photosynthesis. I think this is the best choice to choose it. Let's read this question. What will happen to the level of the solution X if the apparatus is left for two hours? Let's focus with the figure first of all. Yes, we have inside the thistle panel a solution of sugar, which is concentrated, but please look down here. The semi-permeable membrane is not allowing the sugar to pass, which will make it easier for us to answer this question. Let's move to choice A. The level of solution will drop because water will move outside the thistal funnel by osmosis, which is wrong because the concentration of water inside the thistal funnel is very low if we compared it with outside the funnel. So let's move to choice B. No changes to the level of solution. Sugar molecules will diffuse from high concentration areas to low concentration area. That's wrong. First of all, the level will change because we have different concentrations of water. Secondly, the sugar will not move because this semi-permeable membrane will not allow it. So it's wrong. Let's move to choice C. No changes to the level of solution. Again, this part is wrong. Water will move in and out the thistle funnel by equal rate. That's wrong, 100%. Okay, choice D. The level of solution will rise because water will move into the thistle funnel by osmosis. That's right, 100%. Sure, high concentration of water here inside the beaker and low concentration of water inside the thistle funnel. Sure, with help of semi-permeable membrane, the water molecule will diffuse using a small process from high concentration to low, so the level of the water here, the solution will increase. So we have to choose the choice D. Let's see this question. It's talking about respiration. Which element acts as the last electron acceptor during aerobic respiration? Let's remember that in cellular respiration inside the mitochondria we have two stages. The first one, the Krebs cycle, and the second one, electron transport chain, as it's clear here. The final electron acceptor is oxygen. Why? Oxygen has a high electronegativity. Thus, oxygen's high affinity for electrons makes it an ideal acceptor for low energy electrons. With the electrons, hydrogen is added here to oxygen forming what? Water as a final product. That's it. So, choice D. 
What about this question? Water travels through vascular tissue from the roots to the leaves of a plant moving against the force of gravity. Which of the following water properties contribute to water traveling through the vascular tissue? Let's see this. The stickiness between water molecules and the xylem vessel wall is called adhesion. Okay, it's not only that. Adhesion and cohesion work together in the xylem to pull the water molecules from the roots up the stem. Let's see the choices. Solubility, adhesion, ionic bonding, high surface tension. Yes, we said both adhesion and cohesion cooperate to do this work, but once they did not mention it, so we will go with choice B, which is adhesion. In this question, a student prepared two beakers with identical sprigs of a water plant. She placed one beaker in the shade and the other beaker beside a fluorescent lamp. She then systematically increased the distance between the beaker and the lamp. She counted the bubbles given off by the plants in each beaker. Which of the following graphs represents the relation between the number of bubbles produced and distance from lamp? Okay, once you did this, that means we are counting oxygen gas bubbles because this is a photosynthesis process. And we know that the light is the source of energy. And depending on the intensity of light, the rate of photosynthesis will happen. Once she moved the lamp away, that means the number of oxygen bubbles will decrease. Let's look at the choices. The first choice is wrong. Why? Because the distance from light increased at the same time number of bubbles increased, which is wrong. Choice C, stable. And we know it's a limiting factor. I mean the light. So it's wrong. D, stable. Then decreased. It's not related. What about choice B? This is right. Yes, the number of oxygen bubbles will decrease because the distance from light increase. So the right choice here is B. In this question, transmission electron microscope is the best available microscope because we all know this type of microscope let the electrons beams passes through the specimen. So if we look at the choices, we'll find choice B is the right one. It gives detailed images of the cell structures. So this is the right answer. In this question, which of the following statements is true for the organelle number 5 in the diagram below? First of all, let's identify organelle number 5. It's very clear that it's the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It's a series of connected flattened sacs, part of continuous membrane organelle within the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells that plays central role in the synthesis of proteins. Why? Because it's embedded with ribosomes. Now, choice A, synthesis of lipids, that means smooth endoplasmic reticulum responsible for. Choice B, produces ATP without thinking, it's mitochondria. Choice D, found in prokaryotes and eukaryotic cell, actually no. There is no membrane bounded organelles in the prokaryotes. So the right choice here is C. This concludes the first part of our MSAT paper. We have covered structure and function. Next video, we will solve more questions on heredity and genetic technology. Make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell to receive more videos from Mrs. Biology. Thanks for watching.